So today I'm excited to have a guest on the podcast. His name is Bill and he is one of my neighbors and he is in his 70s. And he's just going to share a little bit about the wisdom he's gained from his health journey. And I really love this because I think however old we are, we want to think about where we want to go. How do we want to be as we get older? And we have to use this forward thinking future to really find that motivation to what we want to do for our health today. In the episode, Bill shares a little bit about the omega-3 oil that he uses. It is the same one that I use, and I have become an independent partner with Zenzino because I really like their products. I like how you can actually test your omega-3 levels at home so you know what the is going on on the inside of your body. So there's going to be links in the description if you guys want to check that out. Also, if you purchase with the links, you'll get an extra call with me to go over those test results and really talk through some of these lifestyle strategies that you can do to improve your health overall. Hi friends, and welcome to the Healthy Beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle, mama four and military wife, and I'm passionate about helping women get healthy from the inside out so they can feel better and live their best life. Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight and get in shape? If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably, then you're in the right place. I combine my expertise from my doctorate in physical therapy to my experience as a health coach, personal trainer, and yoga teacher to bring you actionable steps for a healthy lifestyle. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. Today, I'm excited to have Bill on the podcast, the first male on the show. And he's going to talk to us about life after 70 and just the wisdom he's gained and starting to take care of his health. So Bill, tell us a little bit about where your health was a few years, what chronic conditions you had going on. Probably the last 20 years, I've had high blood pressure, high cholesterol. The doctor put me on statins and lisinopril to lower my blood pressure. And it, it controlled my blood pressure up until two years ago, and then it started going up again. He put me on a second medication, hydrolazine, and that was three times a day, which was a real nuisance. And the cholesterol was under control, taking the statins, but I just, I just don't like the statins at all. I think the statins actually gave me neuropathy in my feet. But three years ago, I started taking a real high quality, they call it fish oil, but it's actually an omega-3. It's oily fish, but I started taking this omega-3, and I noticed my blood pressure was was going down, and it was actually getting too low for me. So I contacted my doctor, and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. And he had me stop the hydrolazine, and I've lowered my other medication a little bit. Right now, I'm off the statins because I'm trying something for the neuropathy in my feet. I don't know what to think of statins. I hear... Some people saying they're terrible, they're horrible for you, too many side effects. My sister-in-law and my best friend both started taking them and they got the, the joint pain. So I'm not sure about the statins, but when your doctor recommends something, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, because you want to not have a heart attack. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm probably going to go back. I told him what I was doing for my feet. He said, Get off of them for a month, see what happens, see if your feet get better. So I'm trying that. Uh, and then three years ago when I got on the uh, omega-3, I, I started researching more about diet and health. And one of the main things that I've learned to eliminate from your diet as best you can, because it's in everything, is sugar. Mm-hmm. I have noticed if I eat something sweet with a lot of sugar in it, that night, my feet really burn from the neuropathy. So the the sugar is just, I'm finding out sugar is just pure poison. Yeah. I mean, sugar is very inflammatory. The opposite of omega-3 is sort of like omega-6. So when we're not eating those healthy foods, that's inflammatory when we don't have enough omega-3. So both of those can create more inflammation in your body, which is really at the root of chronic disease too. I have found out through all this education of that, Inflammation is, I mean, it's the enemy. It causes so many ailments. And if you can get the inflammation down and out and, you know, get the right nutrients in, 
I've noticed a, a great change. I actually have more energy. I go to the gym every day and work out, and I feel better now than I have in several years. Another thing I noticed, which was really crazy, I don't have a lot of hair left, but what hair I do have, it went from being almost gray-white to the color is back in my hair. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking that's the omega-3, the balance oil. If you get in balance, your body kind of, I don't know, the right, transitions to what should be your proper age, your proper health at a proper age. So, yeah. And the omega-3s affect your skin, your hair, and all that. So, Bill, with your blood pressure medication, you said you had it sort of upped it to two because it was getting worse. So are you just back on one now? I'm just on, on one medication right now, and it's a lower dose. So I monitor it, but it's it's pretty stable right now. Yeah. That's I, awesome. I really think the omega-3 has really contributed to you know, the better blood flow, the better blood pressure. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there is some science literature about blood pressure and omega-3s, um, especially when we can bring our body into a less inflammatory state, our blood can flow better and there's that less inflammation in our blood vessels. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Just something, of course, I'm guessing your doctor didn't tell you to eat more fish or take a fish oil supplement, but you're doing it and it's well, helping your as health. You, as you well know, doctors get, you know, they go to school for 12 years and they get one day of nutrition in their schooling. So it's not that the nutrition is not important to them, but food will, I mean, if you eat the right foods, you can really maintain your health and improve your health. And, you know, you mentioned one other thing when I was you know, I've been taking this omega-3 now for three years. And the first thing I noticed after just taking it for maybe two months, my skin really improved. And, you know, at my age, a lot of guys my age mm -hmm. get those big purple old, I call them old man bruises. Yeah. And I was, I was getting those and I don't get them anymore. I smacked my hand the other day and I go, well, there's going to be a big bruise. It didn't even bruise. I was amazed. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And the skin can almost thin out a little bit more too. Right. Yeah. So tell me, what else are you doing sort of in your lifestyle? I know you mentioned working out. Was that something newer in the last few years too? No, I've, when we moved 10 years ago, it was a private gym. I joined it. And then several years later, they turned it into, it's open to the residents. So I, I go there five or six days a week. And I've been doing that for years. But as you get older, and, and it's important as you age, it's you got to, the only way you can maintain the muscle mass and just not turn to flab is lift weights and it keeps your bone strong. So I, I've been doing that. And the reason I started working out at a younger age, my dad had a triple bypass at 45 years old. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I've got genetics that I probably need to monitor all this and stay in shape. So that was a lot of my motivation was to, was to continue to work out. And then I take several vitamins. I take a really good multivitamin, and then I take ashwagandha. So I've been doing that also. Yeah, I love that. I love how you shared how your dad had heart disease at a really early age. And a lot of times we just think we're stuck in our genetics. And we do have our genes, but our lifestyle and the things we do have such a big impact. And that's something that we have control over. And so you are now in your 70s and haven't had a heart attack or anything, correct? Yeah, I've no. I've gone to, because of my father's past, the doctors are always very cautious. I tell him he had a, a, he never had a heart attack. He had a triple bypass at 45 and then he had another triple bypass at 68. And then at 85, he had a stroke and passed away. But prior to his first uh, triple bypass. He had smoked for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dad, that smoking is... He said, no, I don't think that had anything to do with it. And I said, Dad, that had everything to do with it. You damaged those arteries for 30 years and you think you're going to be fine? So you're, you're right. We're in charge of our health. Nobody else can do it for us. And if you do your research, change things in your lifestyle, you can definitely, I firmly believe you can really be in charge of your health and, and have a healthy lifestyle and a healthy life. Yeah, I love that. 
And most likely, not always, most likely it's not going to come from the doctor. You have to do it yourself to really do these lifestyle strategies to prevent disease and to really feel your best. Um, Because I know you mentioned when you started taking a little bit better care of your health, your energy started to increase. You kept going to the gym and doing these other things that made you feel really good. Right. Yeah. It's and like and I totally agree with what you're saying. It's it's up to you to maintain your health. The doctors are gonna write a prescription to mask the symptoms of whatever your ailment is, but it's up to you to to research it, see what helps. I mean, I look in all different areas to see what can I do to make this better? What can I do to make that better? And I, the, probably one of the best things I ever did was get on the the good omega three because that I that was one thing I noticed superior change in my health was that. Yeah, I love that, and I think, I mean, conventional medicine plays an important role too. And probably you being on blood pressure medication is super important because we don't want to have high blood pressure. So I love just sort of combining a little bit of that conventional medicine plus doing these lifestyle factors and these other different things is super important when we want to take charge of our health. So Bill, tell me what your goals are for this next decade for yourself. I want to continue to at least maintain the muscle mass I have and even add to it if I can. That's I Mm -hmm. I do take a, a pro when I go work out, I come home, I make a protein shake with some creatine and a really good uh, prebiotic, and I drink that every day. And I've, I'm, I've learned over the years that if you're going to work out, lift weights, your body is going to require more protein. You need to rebuild those muscles, and you can't do it without the protein. Yeah, absolutely. And even I think it's 60. Once you get over 60, your body has a little bit harder time. The protein you take in that you digest, it has a little bit harder time breaking it down. So you need a little bit more because your body has a little bit harder time working and breaking it down too. So it's definitely important to keep that protein intake up and keep that muscle mass up by using those muscles, putting that strain on it, feeling that burn when you're exercising, because that's your muscle breaking down and rebuilding and keeping you strong. That's that's one of my goals is to at least maintain and add if I can. I, I really... And I've told you about the neuropathy. I'm really working at doing my best to either either stop the progression or even reverse it a little bit. And I would like to start doing more cardio because that's, to me, that's, I think the resistance training is more important, at least for me it is, but you need the cardio too. Yeah, I would, I favor resistance training too. But definitely having, getting your heart rate up and just doing a little bit or even going out for walks where you're walking a little bit harder can be beneficial too. But yeah, I usually preference strength training over cardio because there's so many more benefits with the strength training. And sometimes, depending how you're doing your strength training, you can get like a little bit of cardio in there too if you're doing compound moves or some moves back to back too. Oh yeah, I I definitely get my heart rate up on some of my exercises. So yeah, I I definitely know that. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share or maybe just a healthy habit you're doing daily to really take care of yourself? I would just say it's the 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 working out, taking the omega-3 and the protein and just be regular at it. Don't don't skip and don't be hit and miss. And don't wait for January 1st to get started. Don't make that New Year's resolution and go, I'll do it when I get start right now. Yeah, I love that. And I love how just important it is to continue to take care of our health, no matter what our age is. And especially if there's younger people listening, 40s, 50s, or even 60s, if we can scan forward and think, what do we want to be like when we're 70? What do we want to be like when we're 80? And what can we start doing now to put ourselves in a better position to do that? Yeah, there's no better time to start than today. Yes, and it's never too late to start either. And it's never too late to start. I love seeing these. uh, There's a lot of older people at the gym, and I love seeing them in there because it's what they need to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. If we want to live our life to the best and fullest and to be able to do all that, we have to take care of our bodies. I agree. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode today. I'm going to have links in the descriptions to similar episodes. So if you found some of this information interesting, make sure you check that out so you can listen to more. I also encourage you, if you want to be as healthy as you can on the inside, check out my course, Healthy Inside and Out, where my focus is all about lowering inflammation, learning how to nourish your body, teaching you the principles of how your metabolism works, how to balance your blood sugar so that you can live healthy today and that you can really create sustainable health as you get older because these principles are not just for a diet or a quick fix. They're basic principles to live a healthy lifestyle. The course is plug and play. So you're going to have everything in one place. You're going to get all the principles. You're going to get all the tools you need put together in a really friendly format. You're also going to have that option to add one-on-one coaching. If you want some extra coaching calls to really tune in on what is going on with you and having that extra support and accountability. So make sure you guys check out the link down below. There are some extra specials going on till March 10th. So make sure you guys click the link and those bonuses will be listed on the page. All right, everyone have a great day and keep on moving.